Hi, and welcome to my fourth game in the Norwegian Chess Championship 2010 Class 4. And I'm playing the Philidor defense against Stian Valle, which uh, plays for the chess club Akademisk, which is in uh, Oslo. And Stian has 1237 in uh, rating and is highest rated in uh, Class 4. His uh, queen move to f3 surprises me a little bit because it uh, gives me the chance to develop some of my pieces while chasing his queen. And the first thing I see is that if he castles queen side, I might be able to use my bishop here on uh, c8 to pin his uh, queen against his rook here after he has castled. But uh, to do that, I will have to make a few waiting moves, and since this is still the opening, I'm not going to risk that. He has so many active pieces here that uh, what I'm planning to do is just move my knight here to d7 and uh, e5 and force an exchange with uh, his uh, bishop here on uh, c4 because he can't move it away since his queen is uh, also here for the taking. I am uh, unsure as to what side he will castle, if he will castle king side or queen side, but I do feel very uncomfortable when my opponent castles to what I call the wrong side of myself. So uh, I'm moving my a6 pawn up here and uh, giving a little bit of a notice that if he castles queen side, I am already moving my pawns in that direction. Moving my uh, rook here to b8 might not have been such a good idea and uh, it uh, actually hinders me a little bit later on because um, if I now move to uh, b5 with my pawn to gain a tempo against his uh, queen he will sooner or later have the possibility to actually move his uh, knight here to uh, c6 and uh, fork my queen and rook. So uh, to hinder that from happening I'm moving my uh, bishop here to uh, d7. And uh, right now um, he has only three pieces out on the board in the center and he had five pieces. So uh, right now I do not hesitate to take his uh, knight and the only thing I'm curious about is if he will take my knight with his uh, pawn or his queen. But he decides to use his uh, queen. And uh, I now see a possibility to, uh, to get my um, bishop here on uh, f6. And with my rook on uh, b8, I have both a uh, file and a diagonal pointing towards b2 and uh, a possible check. There is of course another good reason to have the bishop here on uh, f6 and the reason for that is I'm preventing his pawn on uh, e4 to move to uh, e5 because uh, right now I have a pawn on d6 which will either be taken or that I will have to use to take his uh, pawn on e5 and he has a queen and a rook here bearing down on my uh, bishop on d7 not that I see that as very realistic at the moment but he does not like my uh, bishop on f6 and uh, he wants it removed and if I do remove it um, I'm placing my rook here on e8 and uh, will still prevent him from coming to uh, e5 with this pawn and right now I have to decide what to do with my uh, bishop but I do find another good move which is bishop to e6 the only place he can move his queen now is to a5 
and if he does so, he loses his uh, knight here on uh, d4, which will be taken by my uh, bishop. So uh, this is a forced exchange. And during the exchange, I'm still pressuring his uh, queen, which will have to move. And I gain a pawn, which is very important. And since I feel very comfortable with the uh, rook endings, I decide that uh, these bishops can uh, be exchanged. And before I do anything else, I want this uh, pawn here on... Uh, e6 to uh, be protected by uh, a pawn instead of by the rook. Now what I want to do is actually to put my uh, rook on e7 but if I do that he could come down here to uh, d5 with his uh, queen and my queen here is uh, kind of blocked in by the rook on e7. I'd like to have my queen a little further up the board at this point. So my queen finds a place on f6. And uh, this is of course also to hinder his uh, queen here to come to uh, h6 with a possible mate. He is uh, doubling his rooks now and putting a um, tremendous amount of pressure on my uh, g7 pawn. And now his queen comes to g3. And he's not planning on a queen exchange because uh, if his rook wasn't here this would be the perfect place to uh, check him and trade queens. But I see that he's moving his uh, king to b1. So he wants to keep his queen on the board. Another trick from uh, Stian Valle. What he's planning now is if I make a greedy move to take his pawn here on f2, which was protected by his queen, then I'm suddenly finding myself in checkmate. Because... When he takes my uh, pawn in front of my king, I cannot take back with my rook here because I will be in check by his queen on b3. And if I move to h8 or f8, it doesn't really matter because the next move is checkmate. So I have to thread very carefully here. So I move my king to uh, h8 and he protects his pawn here with uh, his rook. I am still trying to force an exchange of queens here because right now if he does not take my queen I have a few pawns for the picking. But he finds another solution and right now I have a check here on uh, a8 by his uh, queen and this pawn here is uh, still unprotected. And if he did that check he would take my pawn, I would still get one of his pawns. But he does the same, he uses the time to make a loophole for his uh, king. And I get to protect my pawn with a pawn. And he gets to uh, get his h pawn out of uh, danger. Now I see no problem in taking his f2 pawn. I have analyzed it for at least 10 minutes and uh, I see no problem that I can get myself into. Now here he is uh, trying to trick me once more because if uh, just for the sake of it I uh, double, my po double my rooks here he can uh, check me, check me again and then take my queen. So I, I'm watching myself all the time during this game and here I decide that one of the rooks has to go. And I get his pawn here on e4. But I have a trick up my sleeve myself here in the end. I check him. And separate his uh, queen from his uh, rook. And now he will have to part with his queen. And he gives up.